morning, good morning. Good morning and happy Sunday. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning everyone, happy Sunday. Today is July 17th, July 17th I believe, yes. Or July 18th, July 18th. Good morning, good morning. Come on in, come on in. Good morning, Gloria Thomas. Good morning, Charlotte Timmons. <clears throat> good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Yes, good morning. July 18th. Wow, boy, this time is going by. Good morning, Gerald Driver. <clears throat> Good morning all, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning Deacon Larry West. And good morning Betty Roberts. Good morning, good morning. Good morning Sister Sharon Three. Good morning Wilma Miller. And I'm going to go ahead and start my song folks, okay? Let's, here we go. Mm -hmm. Mr. Curry. Good morning, Nene. Good morning, Mr. Beasley. Yes. Happy blessed Sunday to you as well. Hey. Some sweetness. Some sweetness. Yes, yes. Yes. 
Thompson. complain boy you know it makes us think about all oh, how God has been good to us and Lord I just want to just take the time out to say thank you for all that you've done praise God that was none other than my favorite one of my favorite YouTube folks that is uh, Minister Russell White I just love to hear him sing you all love to hear him sing um, absolutely absolutely um, it is good to see everybody good morning good morning and good morning and I'm just, um, let me see. All right, let's go. Um, I think we're going to do this one again because uh, I just love the way it sounds. All right, y'all. Here we go. Good morning and There's happy. There's a certain kind of shopper at Big Lots. Big in Big Beginners. All right, and here we go. Happy Sunday to you all. Holy, Only a holy look. look. <laughs> Good morning, Sister Ada Stokes. That Jesus. Yes. Oh, so God. Yes. With kids. Good morning, Sister Rona. Yes. All the way from Baltimore. That's promised. Eternal. Yes. 
Yes. Yes. Yes. Eternal. Don't sing like this no more, y'all. They don't. Ooh, remember the church would go up. One of those mothers would kind of break out with one of these hymns. Yeah, the church would just go in. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Boy, that was just, I was just reminded of growing up in my old church and how sometimes one of the mothers would break out with one of those hymns or one of the deacons would break out and the church would just jump on in and boy, it, and it was done. It was a done deal. It was a done, done deal. Um, absolutely, absolutely. Um, all right, y'all, I'm going to give you one more song before we get started. Um, let me go here. You know I love to hear my girl Crystal Rucker, but she just brings it. So here we go, y'all. Usher's going out. I'm just gonna send the ushers out ahead of time because I know hey, I, I know y'all gonna go in. So uh, ushers, go ahead and get dispatched to the different folks' houses, and you know who they are. I ain't got to call call nobody's names. Uh, okay, <laughs> but do stop by Sister Esther Moses Gaston because I know she's gonna go in. <laughs> hey. Come on, y'all. Love this, love, love, love this. All right, we can hope it. Hope the cutting out. I have the faith. Yes. That sees the invisible. Yes. Specs the incredible. Mm -hmm. The invincible. Good morning, Linda Mosley. Faith. Faith. Yes, yes, yes. That can conquer. In. Nay, faith. Yes. Faith. Yes, that's right, Sister McIntyre. Sometimes the, the, the songs would bring the minister to the people. Can solve them. Can solve them. to vision. Freedom. Hey, hey. <laughs> yes. Listen to her. Listen to her, y'all. Yes. They coming, Sister Betty. That's just on their way. <laughs> Listen, they're all. To reach the unreachable. Faith to fight the unbeatable. Faith to remove the unmovable. Hey. Faith that stands the invisible. Good morning, Bruce Cole. Faith. Faith. <laughs> The one is the smarty pants. Can conquer you. Any, anything. Faith. 
to reach the unreachable. Come on. Faith to what? To fight the unbeatable. Faith to remove the unmovable. Oh, faith. Yes, faith the invincible. Everybody, good morning. That was none other than um, Crystal Rucker, decorating your home. Is favorite, your question? Um, YouTube folks, and so here's what I'm going to do because I was told that if um, there's too much Wi Fi going on from other devices within the space that I'm using, that sometimes it interferes. So I am going to turn off um, any other devices that I have so that it may prevent any of the. Um, disruptions amen so uh, I'm doing that now but um, I want to begin by saying good morning to each of you happy Sunday to you all today is July 18th this is the day that the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it um, if you are tuning in you're tuned in to the Berkeley Mount Zion Sunday Learning Institute Berkeley Mount Zion is located at 1400 8th Street in the city of Berkeley with the Reverend Brian D Hunter is our pastor teacher my name is brother steve gardner and i um, am your sunday school instructor and facilitator and again it is my pleasure and my privilege to uh, serve in this capacity and uh, thank you all so very much for tuning in many of you have been very faithful over the last year or two a year uh, we started this in 2020 in the second sunday in June, I believe, is when we started doing a Sunday School uh, Zoom or Sunday School Facebook Live, and many of you have been so faithful in tuning in, and we just thank and praise praise God for it. I don't know what we're going to do when we get back, you all, because this is pretty comfortable. It's getting pretty comfortable, um, and um, I just I, I'm, I'm thanking God for the opportunity. I'm learning lessons, and I'm hoping as pastor has been preaching and teaching that we're learning lessons that when we 
win and we return back um, that will what are we going to do differently so I'm just learning a lot of lessons in all of this and so I thank and praise God for the lessons in the application um, I'm again uh, extremely privileged and happy to be able to share with you um, each Sunday morning and again thank you all so so very much for tuning in so um, we're going to begin um, let me see if there are any particular announcements that I want to make before we get started okay so I do want to remind you again um, if you haven't done so I think we premiered this a couple of weeks ago this is brother Donald Dones he has a book called doors of our life um, please ma'am please sir I would love for you uh, to uh, get your own copy amen or get a copy or two and so you can find this on Amazon um, and then I think he actually put a link up so we want to begin to support our own but I love the fact that when we're getting folks to uh, write and um, so brother Donald has wrote a book and I'm actually still reading it and again I want to encourage all of you to uh, to get a copy to, to support brother Donald and so buy a copy or two or give get one as a gift for somebody and so we want to encourage um, him and, and again I think it's a wonderful wonderful um, testimony testimony that he has written a book called Doors of Life. It's pretty interesting too. So um, it's a good read. It's a good read by the Donald. So again, congratulations and a job well done. Um, let's say uh, vaccines, vaccines. We are continuing to uh, provide vaccines for folks. Remember um, the, uh, uh, that's a good question. That's a good question. Um, I'll talk with Brother Donald about that, Sister Maxine, about getting the books for me. So, Brother Donald, I think um, I need to get some copies in the bookstore so that I can have them available. So, you, let's you and I talk about that, and then we'll um, we'll see. That's a good that's, that's a good suggestion, Sister Maxine. I tell you, she always is that. She's the one in the you know the sits at the front of the class and is always going to say, "Hey, what about this?" So, thank you, Sister Maxine. So, Brother Donald, did you hear that question? Um, People want to know that if I can get some copies to have in the bookstore, which I want to talk with you about, and we can have copies available. So, yes, absolutely. I think we can make that happen. So we'll talk a little later on, Brother Donald, and thank you. Um, vaccines, uh, folks. So most of you are hearing that with this new variant, the Delta uh, virus, that particularly it is affecting people who are unvaccinated, who are unvaccinated. So... I am going to encourage you all, please, ma'am, please, sir, if you have not been vaccinated, to please, uh, please get vaccinated. If you know of someone who needs to be vaccinated, again, we, we being uh, West Oakland Health Center is providing the vaccine. We're actually providing it at two sites. We're providing it at our West Oakland and in our East Oakland site. And we, also, we offer the Moderna, which is two dose, of the vaccine anywhere from 21 to 28 days apart and then there's the Pfizer which is two doses anywhere from 17 to 21 days apart and then there is the Johnson Johnson which is the one and done and again um, I'm just going to encourage I know there are a lot of different conspiracy theories and things but listen what I'm learning is we've got a one trust science and again trust God who has given us the tools and the ability to do this what we do know is that this uh, virus kills and one of the things that we want to be able to do is to do everything that we can to prevent so again the masking the social distancing and I know things are kind of opening up but again uh, we have some uh, parts of the country well even part of the state uh, Los Angeles has now instituted a mandatory mask requirement for indoors again and I think people are trying to be uh, careful and to to side on the side of caution by saying let's let's do this again just to make sure that we don't skip any steps of prevention. So again, let's let's do our very best. So again, thank you all, um, thank you all so very much for those of you who are continuing to encourage others to be get vaccinated. I spent some time uh, this past week with um, a group of young adults from City Corps job training. It was down in West Oakland. And so Dr. Adrian James, who is our chief medical officer, and I 
um, were had a chance to speak. Okay, looks there we go. Am I back? I was kind of frozen for a second. I actually saw myself freeze for a second, so I think I'm back. Okay, yeah. Sometimes we have a little couple of snafus and some um, technical issues, but I think we're we're still on. Okay, hey, amen. I did see myself. I actually saw myself freeze. So. Um, I'm doing my very best to make sure um, I can. So let me do this really quickly, you all. I'm going to turn my, there we go. I turned my speaker, make sure you turned it all the way off so that I um, am not pulling any other Wi-Fi, okay? Because I've, I've heard that was helpful. All right. Okay, so with that said, um, with that said, yes. Thank you, Sister uh, uh, Drayton. Thank you so very much. You all have to help me um, because when you talk to me, that helps me understand if there's anything going on so perfect perfect okay so you can hear me okay that's good that's good and so folks we are studying um in the old testament we are studying the old testament we are studying out of the book of nehemiah nehemiah actually nehemiah is probably one of the books um in the bible and one of the stories in the bible that uh, a lot of people haven't spent a lot of time uh, covering but it's an actual wonderful wonderful lesson as we cover this information and um, remembering remembering our lessons um, for this uh, quarter um, our courage facing threats courage facing threats and we're in unit two so this particular theme for the quarter uh, for this entire section was called people of valor people of valor and we began by the first four lessons in the month of june dealt with uh, acts of courage and then um the uh unit two is courage facing threats courage facing threats and we are dealing with the story of nehemiah um combats derision and danger Nehemiah combats combats derision and danger okay so before we begin any further let's go ahead and have a word of prayer father in heaven how we thank you for this day we thank you for the blessed opportunity and privilege to pray we thank you dear God for just your mercy and your grace now God as we prepare to study your word we pray that you will allow our hearts and minds to be open and to be receptive to that word and most importantly that we might apply principles father that helps us to walk closer to thee we thank you father for the opportunity to be a vessel let me decrease a thou might increase that something might be said to encourage to uplift to challenge those that are listening today father we just thank you for your continued blessings and your provisions throughout this pandemic dear god we just thank you for the opportunity to continue to study your word through facebook through zoom and the opportunity to continue to provide ministry uh, to the people. Father, we just thank you and will always be careful to give your name, the glory and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So, you all, we are looking at um, a theme here of these lessons in the month of July. And the unit theme is courage facing threats. Courage facing threats. And for a lot of us, um, we have. Um, had to deal with uh, the threat. And I think for us today, the whole COVID uh, virus has really been a threat to us. It has threatened our health, uh, it has threatened our lives, it has threatened our economics, it has been a threat to us. And if we apply anything in this particular time period is that we've had to be courageous into dealing with um, the, the, the virus. And so um, these lessons um, are in this particular uh, unit, have lessons from the Old Testament. Remember the Bible is divided into two divisions, the Old and New Testament. And Nehemiah 
is uh, the book of the Bible that we're studying from Nehemiah and that's spelled N-E-H-E-M-I-A-H and Nehemiah, let's take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. It is the 16th book, the 16th book in the Old Testament, the 16th book of the Old Testament following the book of Ezra. Now, um, our, our commentators of, uh, and have said that Ezra and Nehemiah kind of really are brother, brother books uh, because much of what is covered really covers uh, the rebuilding, um, the rebuilding of, uh, of the temple, and the rebuilding of the uh, the walls of Jerusalem, which we're gonna we're gonna uh, cover today. But Nehemiah is a great great story, and that we're gonna be taking a look at. But this whole theme goes around rebuilding, restoring, uh, repentance, and returning to God. So those are four R's. I want you to write those down. Rebuilding, All right? Go ahead and write that down. I should have asked you to get you something to uh to uh write with. And I'm going to encourage you um, each Sunday morning that we are on. Um, just assume that I'm going to say write this down. So uh, it's important. That's um I learned that lesson from Faye Oliver. She's always talking about the importance of make sure that you have and you're taking some good notes. All right. So thank you, Sister Faye Oliver. But that's kind of what I learned from you. Rebuilding restoring repentance and returning to god okay oh and good thank you and thank you for the reminder so let me just do this all right remember last week um your homework assignment was to encourage three people thank you sister gloria for that reminder um did you all do your homework now come on don't don't you don't have to try to impress me but did you intentionally uh encourage three people this past week I'm looking, I'm looking to see if you all did your homework. You did your homework. Did you intentionally encourage? It could have been a phone call. It could have been a uh, a text. It could have been, I mean, a conversation that you had. But I wanted to make sure that this past week, that part of our lesson application was to encourage. To en oh, Okay, I see you. I see you. Yes, good, good, good. All right, y'all. All right, I see you. All right. I see you all. Very good. Sister Gaston, Sister uh, Ron and Jeannie Tatum, Sister uh, Maxine, Sister Nene. Yes. Good, you all. Good, good, good. So let me say this. That that homework assignment, that homework assignment doesn't end. <laughs> Continue to do that. Rehearse that a lot more. Rehearse that a lot more that you're going to continue to encourage people, to encourage people. And somebody said it felt so good. Good, good. It, it ought to. To, to encourage people and people need it this in this time and day people need it and some uh, good sister McIntyre says to try to do it daily it absolutely absolutely to encourage but this lesson we're dealing with the four R's and what are they rebuilding restoring repentance and returning to God returning to God all right so let's take a look kind of a little bit of background of our lesson because uh, Nehemiah has is living as a Jew in the in Persia and so he is far away from his country because as he actually was born in captivity he was born in captivity and so he really did not experience much of as the children of Israel began to migrate and to move but he has one that now has we are introduced to him in his adult life and he is serving as a cupbearer uh, to the king of Persia, and the cupbearer was it was a pretty pretty high uh, important position because he was the one that would taste the uh, things that the the king would would drink to ensure that it wasn't poisoned. You know, that's a that's a pretty pretty you you'd never know that is this cup gonna do it? Is this the one that's gonna take me out? And so his job. Uh, was to uh, provide uh, protection in a sense by bringing the king his whatever beverage he was drinking and he was to ensure by tasting it that it wasn't poison. All right, so listen, this is a little bit of background. So the book of Nehemiah complements the book of Ezra. So Ezra was the book preceding this particular book. So remember we said Nehemiah was the 16th book in the Old Testament. Ezra is the 15th book um and this book 
begins with the story of Nehemiah. And Nehemiah writes this in a way that's almost like he is telling the story himself as the first person. Um, so whereas Ezra, uh, that particular book was especially concerned to rebuild the spiritual walls of Jerusalem, and that is to bring Israel back to obedience of the law of Moses, Nehemiah was especially interested in rebuilding the physical walls of Jerusalem. So one was Ezra was building the spiritual walls to really get the people to repent, uh, to have restoration, uh, to bring them back to obedience. And Nehemiah, particularly in this particular story, was more so interested in building the physical walls of the city so that the city would have protection against their enemies. Amen. So they would be guarded against the enemies. Nehemiah was especially interested in rebuilding the physical walls of Jerusalem. Uh, Ezra again emphasized the religious dimensions of building a nation. Nehemiah emphasized the political and military dimensions of the task. So he was, Nehemiah, as we'll see in this story, was more concerned with making sure that people, uh, the people were protected against their enemies. Um, so th this Nehemiah follows the account of how Nehemiah a Jew who was an important official in the ancient Persian Empire was inspired to help rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, the capital city of the ancestors nation. And again, um, Nehemiah, the story will say in the very first part that he is working, uh, he is working as a cup bearer, uh, cup bearer high of, uh, position with uh, the king. And uh, he was far away from his country and um, the, uh, the capital city of the ancestors nation. Okay, um, so Nehemiah's story begins in the month, kind of usually in the latter month of the year, um, and, and King Artaxerxes, Artaxerxes was the king. Um, he was serving as one of the king's personal uh, attendants at the royal palace, all right? And in the earlier part of the book, Nehemiah receives a visit from his brother, amen? He receives a visit from his brother and um, his brother begins to tell him about the state of the of Jerusalem. And he saying the Jerusalem is looking bad. He said the, the walls are burnt down from when uh, they were attacked by the enemies and the city really is in, almost in ruins. And so his brother gives him some very sad news you know it's almost like if you know somebody comes and tells you that the house that you grew up in or the city that you grew up in is that they said the city is all messed up and sometimes i think listen we get i don't know about you but as i drive around uh the bay area now um you know and you see sometimes the state of the places that you grew up with because there's a lot of um disheartening things that you see you know we have a lot of homelessness and the all of that that's taking place and sometimes it, it, it saddens me because uh, I remember when the cities were flourishing and businesses were booming and kids were playing out and just there were a lot more things happening um, and some of that is uh, not so much the case anymore but um, we're seeing a lot but he gets a message from his brother um, and some others that uh, Jerusalem is in bad shape. He's in bad shape, and this this saddens this saddens um, Nehemiah. He saddens him. He begins to pray right away um, to uh, to God about the uh, because his heart is is touched uh, and saddened, and has he, it becomes a burden to him. Um, and so, um, you know, he think, he's thinking about his place of his ancestors and, and it, so it hurts him. It hurts him and he's saddened by it. He is saddened by it. Um, and he learned that things were not going well for the Jews in their homeland and they were facing hardship and humiliation um, from non-Jewish settlers who were living in the area. Um, and so in, in, in addition, the walls of the city uh, were just remained in ruins. Um, and so it's just was it was just a bad shape it was bad bad shape all right um and so he he prayed um and sought god's help and, and he prayed for 
his city he prayed for this people um yeah so it's just it can be sad and i think again as you think about it um he had a he hit nehemiah had a love of his people a love for his culture and most importantly a love and devotion to god absolutely and so he was he he was burdened he was burdened by it and and sometimes when things bother us or we're burdened by it, things are heavy in our hearts we oftentimes can see that it may be exemplified in our behavior and actions um, I was just telling somebody yesterday um, we were talking um, at, about just the culture at work and um, I'm, I'm, I, I tend to think of myself as a pretty upbeat kind of guy I kind of think that I'm kind of fun loving and upbeat and that's kind of my personality and I'm pretty I think I'm pretty consistent with that um, with um, being upbeat and fun loving and that's kind of what most people know me for and when I'm not you know it, then people can see something so you know usually I'm at work and I will uh, talk with people good morning good morning how you doing all right let's make it a good day we're gonna we're gonna get through this we're gonna get through this so I'm talking a lot and um, there are some times when things are, are are troubling me and people can see it and I think I'm trying to think of a, a case the last time when um, my daughter ended up uh, uh, getting COVID I remember my heart was heavy and I was you know worried and concerned and then I said when I went to work people said you okay and I was like yeah I'm okay I'm okay um, but they could see it. it they could see my countenance if you will my aura my energy had changed and I think that is um, one of the things that people will begin to know about us and to see when things are heavy on our hearts um, it's sometimes when things we're burdened down with things it sometimes can be can manifest itself in our attitudes and behavior and so we have to be very careful too we have to be very careful because people will always uh, watch us uh, and they'll pay close attention so in some cases I, I like the fact that when people can see a difference it make it helps me to know you got to be careful Steve because people are watching you amen and so Nehemiah received the word he was became very burdened by that and began to pray um, and didn't really hear anything for about four months and then uh, as he was serving the king you know serving the king the king noticed his countenance so let me kind of read this I'm just giving you a little bit of a backdrop before we really get into the heart of the lesson um, I want to go to Nehemiah um, okay and I'm in chapter 2 and it says early the following spring during the 20th year of King Artaxerxes reign I was serving the king his wine I had never appeared sad in his presence before this time so the king asked me why are you so sad you aren't sick are you you look like a man with deep troubles so listen um it was almost a crime for you to be in the palace of the king and be saddened that part of it would it would indicate that you were unhappy in your position and that could be be costly because one not only could you lose your life I mean your job you could also lose your life because it would be considered treason if you were unhappy and you were in the palace serving the king and the king noticed his countenance he noticed his countenance and so um, uh, he asked Nehemiah what's what's going on what's going on you you're not sick but why are you so sad and again um, Nehemiah uh, began to be on he prayed right away because he wanted to make sure his response was appropriate because his response could mean one he could have lost his job and lost his life and he began to tell the king that he was uh, concerned about his his country he was concerned about his people and that um, he wanted to you know he was just concerned and as a result that was sadness first. okay so uh, so the king asked he says then I was badly frightened but I replied long live the king so he's trying to help the king long live the king why shouldn't I be sad for the city where my ancestors are buried is in ruins and the gates have been burned down and listen and the king uh, responded well how can I help you 
With a prayer to the God of heaven, I replied, If it please your majesty, and if you are pleased with me, your servant, send me to Judah to rebuild the city where my ancestors are buried. So now he's making a he is making a request of the king to say, the king has asked him, Well, what's going on? What's wrong with you? And he began to he prayed and then he complimented the king, long with the king, because he didn't want the king to think that he was he was unhappy with his position because that could be considered an offense and could again lose his job and possibly his life as a result. And so um, let me just put a pin in that. It's really important because we represent we represent our Father that our continents that we want to, we want to walk in a way where people see us and go hey. This, bull, this person always seems to be happy and upbeat and just loving life. There ought to be something that people can see that sets us apart. Amen. So people ought to see a difference in the way in which we behave, in the way in which we live our lives. Things should not affect us as believers as it affects other people. But we ought to have a hope a, and a belief and a strength that God is going to see us through. Amen. So I said that to say that the way in which we behave. Um, so our attitude is the way we feel. Our behavior is the way we act. And people ought to see something in our behavior that that gives people the impression that this person is just, there's something about them. There's a light, there's a glow that comes from them. And so, yes, I, I want to be known as a fun-loving, happy, um, person to uh, making sure that people see something in me, amen. And so, um, yeah, somebody said, show some sign that that you know life is not beating you up. Now, life can give you some challenges, amen. But when we know that we know that we know that we're going to trust in God, amen. That no matter what, I will always, no matter what men say or do, I'm going to trust in Him. All right. So Nehemiah says to the king. Yes, if you allow me a leave of absence to go and rebuild the sit the walls uh, of Jerusalem, king. And then the king not only gives grants that to him, he says, I will also give you the the tools that you need, the materials that you need. I will also send you uh, some an escorts and some soldiers to help. And then Nehemiah also asks, because as he has to travel this way and as he travels, he's going to run into people that say, hey, where are you going? What are you doing? What's going on? He asked the king for a letter to say, I have permission to travel as I travel. And so Nehemiah really thought this through um, and realized that some people might stop him and he might be approached by folks and saying, what business are you, do you have in this land? What business as you travel? And so he received something from the uh, king, a letter from the king. And it says, um, let me just give you this little background. Uh, he says, I also said to the king, if it please your majesty, give me letters to the governors of the province west of the Euphrates River, instructing them to let me travel safely through their territories on my way to Judah. And please send a letter to Asaph, the manager of the king's force, instructing him to give me timber. I will need to make beams for the gates of the temple fortress for the city walls and for a house for myself. And the king granted these requests because the gracious hand of God was on me. So... The story of Nehemiah begins with Nehemiah being told about the state of uh, the, the city of Jerusalem. He's just like, he gets a message from his brother. It hurts his heart. He appears when he um, uh, is serving the king some wine on one particular day. The king could see that something was up. Nehemiah wasn't himself. Amen. He could see this. Something's bothering him. And he knew he wasn't sick, he said. But he realized something was taking place. So again, um, let me say this, that I think one of the things that we can learn from that is we want to be very careful in what we say and do and how people see us because that can be a testimony to a lot of folks. So we want to do our very best to say people this for people to see in us. So this is... The Jesus in me knows the Jesus. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Here we go. That's a song with that one. Uh, let it shine, let it shine. So that light ought to shine within us that people can see something. They can see a difference in us. 
even as we go through what we're going through, we say, you know, I, I know we're going through a pandemic, but I'm trusting God. I, Lord, I thank you. You've provided for me. And, and Lord, I've learned some lessons from this. I'm not able to fellowship like I, like I used to. I miss so, but I've learned some, some sit down, be quiet lessons, some be still lessons. So Lord, I thank you for that. And so we want to look at things from that particular perspective and not always like, oh, woe was me, woe was me. And I'm, listen, um, I've learned not to ask God a whole lot of why. Why is this? Why that? But Lord, thank you. And Lord, what's the lesson I can learn from it? So Lord, what lesson, what lesson can I learn from this? Amen. I want, when when life gives me challenges, and as opposed to me saying, oh Lord, woe is me, woe is me. I want to say, Lord, I don't know what it is, but I'm trusting that you're going to see me through. And as I look back over my life, you all, you know, I can I can honestly say he's never failed me yet. He has never failed me yet. Yes. Uh can bring us to another dimension. Absolutely. So some sometimes when we are challenged by things, it helps us to grow stronger. So they what they say, what kid what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Amen. So Lord, I'm thanking you for those uh challenges and those valley experiences in my life. The valley experiences in my life because it helps me to grow stronger. All right. So he gets permission. He gets everything. He gets uh, letters and gets permission. He gets supplies. And now he enters into uh, 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 Jerusalem to begin his work. All right. He begins his work. All right. And that's kind of where our lesson begins. I wanted to give you a little bit of background. Now, Nehemiah wasn't. He wasn't, Nehemiah was a layman. He wasn't a priest. He wasn't a prophet. He was just a, a layman that loved God. Amen. He is just a, a layman that loved God. He had a true devotion. Praise. I love the story of Nehemiah because he had a true devotion. All right. So, um, so of course, he was in exile in Persia. Uh, the king gave him permission to go rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And now... Um, as he approaches uh, this particular um, task, he is going to, in our, in our lesson is entitled, Nehemiah combats, combats derision. Derision really is another word for ridicule and mockery and danger. So you know when you always have an assignment, you always have something that um, you've been assigned to do. You know, the enemy is not is not going to be happy. You're going to get some oppositions. People can always say, give you some, ah, what, what's going on? So there's going to be. And sometimes, listen, <clears throat> let me tell you this. Come here for a second. Let me tell you something. Sometimes that can come from other believers. Sometimes your own Christian family and believers can sometimes be discouraging. So, you know, um, that can happen, y'all. That sometimes as you are focused, and that's why it says, Let's let's learn to, to be around people that are more encouraging. I don't want to I don't want to be around you if you're gonna always say, well, you know, ah, that's not the way we've done it before. I don't know why you're doing it that way. When you are have an assignment and you know that's something you to do, sometimes you're gonna get pushback from you don't get pushback from enemies, but then it's funny when you get a pushback from you know believers who's like, wait a minute, I thought yeah, aren't, don't we serve the same God? And so. Nehemiah is combating, but he's combating um, division, uh, derision, and danger. Der and again, um, derision is another word for mockery and ridicule. All right. So this is kind of where our lesson begins. This is where our lesson begins. Um, yeah, people are jealous if you're happy all the time. So let me tell you, this is this is I learned this. Um, I was doing an exit interview with someone at the job, and. Um, and, um, you know, I was just saying, you know, sometimes it used to bother me growing up because sometimes, you know, when people didn't like you just because they don't know why they didn't like you. They just didn't like you. You know, people, you know, and, and I know it happens a lot of times. Um, I'm going to make sure I'm careful with this. I know sometimes, uh, particularly I know with whether they'll say, oh, she thinks she cute. You know, they, they kind of get that. Or you think you, you think you all that. You know, and I, I, my response is, no, you think that I think that I'm all that. Uh, but I've learned, you know, not to, I mean, to, apo to not to apologize because of a favor, of God's favor, of God's favor. So I've learned, I've learned not to do that. Um, and so I'm, I'm learning um, 
that that's important that I'm, I'm learning not to be uh, apologetic just because of God's blessings um, and so and I, I'm going back to say that that one person said to me she said you know what Steve sometimes people don't like you because you like you and I said you know that's that is good to know sometimes people don't like you because you like you amen and so um, that can happen a lot of times that people can sometimes be envious or jealous just because you you have a level of confidence you have a level of comfort a level of security about yourself and about your relationship with your Heavenly Father all right okay so we're in Nehemiah we're in the fourth chapter Nehemiah is beginning to build the walls of Jerusalem okay so here's what's happening so Whenever you know there's a project, there's always some folks who are going to say, oh, why what you doing? So here it goes. Nehemiah 4th chapter, verse 1. But it came to pass that when Symbalit heard that we built the wall, he was wroth. He was, he was upset. He just was like, oh, what's going on? What's going on? What's happening with this? And I'm going to go back to my um, uh, uh, quest Bible because I like the way it reads. So... Um, here it is. I'm going to read it from this particular uh, version. Sambalit, you know, he was an official, was very angry when he learned that we were rebuilding the wall. He flew into a rage and mocked the Jews, saying in front of his friends and the Sumerian army officers, What's this, what does this bunch of feeble Jews think that they are doing? Do they think they can build the wall in a day if they offer enough sacrifices? Look at all those charred stones that they are pulling out of the rubbish and using again. And so as Nehemiah and, and his team, uh, the mem members of the city are uh, that he has identified to help build the wall, there's some people who are sitting on the sidelines. You know how folks laughing at you. And, and it kind of reminds me when Moses was building the ark. People like, oh, look at this fool. Ain't a, ain't a cloud in the sky. And he's building this ark. <laughs> What's, you know, he's building the ark kind of, and it's 100 degrees. And so very similar to this, um, Sambalit was um, a uh, Sumerian army officer who became just very angry that here he had... A visitor someone had started to rebuild the wall and see sometimes people are upset because uh, for selfish reasons is it was it something taking place that it was going to cut into your business or your economic gain that you are um, uh, making the people do and so um, as they're building the wall they're building the wall they are uh, building the wall around the city to prevent the enemies from attacking so they, that's kind of one of the reasons and again Nehemiah is doing this because of his love for his people and his love for God and he says God let me go and do this and God has granted that but as he's done it with anything else sometimes you're gonna have opposition you're gonna have people say oh what's going on okay so here we go um, so not only is Sambalit um, the getting uh, making mockery he getting his, he's getting some of his other friends to uh, jump in and one of them was Tobiah the Ammonite so in the third verse it says Tobiah the Ammonite who was standing beside him remarked the stone wall would collapse even if a fox walked along the top of it so they're providing a lot of just side chatter you know people always talking you trying to do something and you have people on the on the sidelines you know making making fun of you or just kind of laughing at you and kind of, you know there are times in our lives where people you would do some things and people would make fun of you or laugh and and ridicule you and and our response is to be well you know lord i'm going i'm going to just continue anyway i'm going to continue anyway so that's one of the things that we have to keep in mind is that when we've been given an assignment and we know that that's what you to do no matter what other men may say or do, you do it all to the glory and honor of God. Amen. And sometimes you have to learn to just ignore. And, I, and listen, that's easier said than done. It is easier said than done. You know, I think about, I think about, uh, what is it? The, uh, the, the um, central, oh, the, the central rock nine, you know, the, those students that, that had to do, uh, to do integration 
in the school in what 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 state was that? Was it Alabama? Was it Arkansas? Was it Arkansas? I believe Arkansas, Alabama. One in Arkansas, I believe Arkansas. Yeah, Arkansas. Um, and um, that they had to they had to persevere and go through these lines where people laughing and teasing them. And some of this was a little bit more dangerous because they uh you know people were spitting and and throwing stuff and you know boy that's a hard one now that's a that's a hard one and I, i'll be honest i know that we have done a lot of uh tra thank you arkansas thank you Sister oliver um central rock nine central rock nine and having to to stand firm you know they they, and they had a lot of talks to say hey you you're gonna have to you're making history but you're gonna have to really hold your tongue and hold your hold your peace because there's gonna be a lot of opposition and so um that's one of the things that kind of reminds me of it sometimes we've got to hold our we've got to hold our tongue we don't always have to say something back and i and i'm i'm learning that that sometimes i have to i have to be still and sometimes lord would say just be quiet just be quiet don't you don't have to respond back you don't have to always respond back and sometimes it's hard because i think we're living in a time and particularly as people of color sometimes um we feel like you know people have always we're tired of this we're tired of this we're tired of folks just doing what they're doing and and now we're gonna you know we're gonna say something or do something back and so this is one of the things that makes it very very um challenging as believers because we we sometimes have to resist to always say something back okay um so they were clowns i think somebody said clown just on the on the sideline making fun of them and so then um nehemiah went right into prayer just to god and he was nehemiah's prayer was more so they're not only disrespecting us they're disrespecting god and his prayer his prayer uh was lord you know sh make them understand make them understand that this they're gonna have to see what's taking place so then i prayed hear us O god our god for we are being mocked May their scoffing fall back on their own heads and may themselves become captives in a foreign land. Do not ignore their guilt. Do not blot off their sins for they have provoked you to anger here in the presence of the builders. So Nehemiah was like, you know what? You know, you can, you can make fun of us, but now that you're going to try to mock God. And so his prayer was a little bit more, get them Lord, get them God. Um, and so um, again, we want to be very careful with all anything is that sometimes uh, you know, even because the Bible tells us that, you know, pray for your enemies, pray for your enemies is that, um, you know, sometimes we want God to get them and we want to be there when the getting gets done. Amen. But I'm learning, I'm learning that, um, you, you, you it's, it's, it is important that we understand to, to pray for our enemies and say, Lord, I'm just going, I'm going to do your will. I'm going to do your will. I'm going to do that. All right. So um, at, uh, I'm in the sixth verse. At last, the wall was completed to half its original height. So even through all of this, all of the chatter on the sidelines, all of the mockery, all of the uh, derision that was taking place, the people continued to work. The people continued to work. And listen, I want you to read the book of Nehemiah, and I want to make a suggestion to you. If you go on, if you go on YouTube there's you can just put the story of nehemiah it is really a wonderful story you could get the whole sense of it this is really just dealing with nehemiah facing courage because of the ridicule that um was taking place um but here's the good news the wall ends up getting built amen the wall ends up getting built and there's that restoration uh repentance uh rebuilding uh, and returning to God. That really was the important piece of it. All right. Uh, at last the wall, I'm in the sixth verse. At last the wall was completed to half its original height around the entire city for the people had worked very hard. So sometimes folks, we have to kind of stay, we have to be persistent and be consistent. We've got to st stay in there, hang in there. Now, I don't know who wrote that song. Uh, I think it was James Cleveland who, who used to, who uh, the song, I don't feel no ways tired. Let me come here. Let me tell you something. Sometimes I feel tired. Now listen, now James. I listen. James is a great song, but sometimes, y'all, let's be honest. Sometimes I'm just tired. And so, listen, James. Great. I I don't feel no way. Hey, hey, James. Sometimes I feel tired. Amen. Sometimes y'all feel tired. Amen. So listen, great, great song. 
<laughs> great, great songs, but yes, um, absolutely. All right. At last, the wall was completed to have its original height around the entire city, but the people had worked very hard. But when Samballot and Tobiah and the Arabs, Ammonites and Ashdodites heard that the work was going ahead and that the gaps in the wall were being repaired, they became furious. So now they really upset because all of that mockery and stuff not, is not really working. And so they all made plans to come and fight against Jerusalem and to bring about confusion there. But we prayed to our God. Here's on Nehemiah. But we prayed to our God and guarded the city day and night to protect themselves. So what took place was once they found out that uh, the talking wasn't doing what was necessary, they said, well, you know what? We're going to let's just prepare to attack them. And then, But what Nehemiah did, as you read the story, is they assigned people to continue the work, continue the work. And then we have one works and one guards the wall. So he began. And you know what? That's so important that... Um, I like the the concept of how when they're protecting the city is that we have to protect our hearts amen our hearts need to be protected and guarded so that the enemy doesn't get in so we've got to be very careful and guard our hearts and guard the things that we take in and say Lord protect my heart protect my mind and so that um, things the enemy cannot attack um, and so I love that um, metaphors I think about it and that's one of the things but um, in this particular case they Nehemiah assigned um, a, a person to guard and a person to build so they didn't stop working and so they began to uh, the story goes on to say that they began to say tell Nehemiah to come here we want to talk to him because this was kind of their approach they want to talk but Nehemiah says no um, I, I'm not able to talk I can't come down he, and that's the that's the the thing that he says, I, I'm, I'm, I'm working and I can't come down. And so sometimes people will try to distract you, you all. Sometimes people will try to distract you from things. And you've got to have that mind that Nehemiah said, I've got a mind to work and I, I'm not going to stop. And so that means we want to be consistent in what we do. And so um, the lesson really talks about, and when you have time, when you have time, I want you to read the whole story. But I, I really want to encourage you. Go to YouTube and even take a look. There's some great children's stories. Those, those are very helpful. I like watching those because it really, from a very elementary uh, perspective, breaks the story down. Nehemiah, a devoted uh, layman who loved his people, but most importantly loved God, uh, had a heart and a mind to rebuild the wall of the city of Jerusalem. Um, he was granted permission by uh, the king of where he served and not only granted permission, but God put it on the king's heart to give him whatever uh, he needed. He needed uh, uh, a letter to show uh, permission. He needed the, the tools. He needed the uh, uh, security. He needed all of those things to make it necessary. And so when God assigns us to do something he also will provide for us amen you believe that when god assigns us to do something he also will provide for us so to keep that keep that in mind so in this um in this chapter because we're about right out of time i know we had so much to cover you all i get so excited um uh, it was verses uh, one through nine verses one through nine but I, if you read the whole story i think you'll really get a good sense uh, of that but I want to encourage you thank you sister Effie and Thomas yes if you look at the children's stories on YouTube it's they're great they're great stories and they just present it in a very plain and simple way so I want to encourage you to do so um, but ne nevertheless uh, we made our prayer to our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them and so the wall ends up getting built amen so that's kind of where the story kind of goes into but I want you to read it because this particular lesson was just showing us that sometimes when we are tasked to do something, you're going to get some opposition. You can rest assured that the enemy is going to try to oppose you. Now, uh, sometimes the enemy uh, uh, may come in different forms. Or sometimes the um, distractions may come in different forms. And sometimes it's clear enemies. And then sometimes there's people very close to us that, that may, may be a part of that. But we want to make sure... Um, that we continuing to have a mind to work. So here are the last couple of things I want to say to you, the practical points. Um, 
Here's the fourth thing, remember, no one who seeks to live a godly life will go unchallenged. So we'll know that. You will not go unchallenged to when you seek in the godly life. People are always going to challenge you. They tell you you're not politically correct. You know, people don't live like that anymore. So just know that's going to take place. As believers, people will challenge you. And I think it the moral compass of this country has really gone awry. Uh, but we'll understand that when we challenge to live a godly life, it will not go unchallenged. Number two, we should plan for success with sound strategy and partnerships that do not compromise God's word. Wow, that's so important. That do not compromise God's word. Amen. So the more we learn and uh, understand God's word, the more we understand to apply it to our lives so that we don't live in a day of compromise. Amen. God gives wisdom. Number three, God gives wisdom and resources to face both long term and immediate challenges. Amen. So just know the challenges will come, but God will be faithful to see you through those challenges. It doesn't mean it's not it's not going to be easy, but he will give you the necessary power and wherewithal to get through those challenges. Amen. Uh, number four, faith does not discourage preparation, but rather um, inspires it. Amen. Amen. I like that one. And number five, as believers, we can face enemies and challenges with confidence, knowing God is with us. And so even though Nehemiah had to deal with the challenges and the derision. And again, derision means um, ridicule and mockery. That's going to come. The people are going to make fun of us. Um, and, and I think a lot of us have had that experience. Um, and uh, But just knowing uh, that, that we serve God. And again, asking God to give us direction and guidance, particularly when we are made fun of or mocked. You know, And again, just having a, a, a good sense of of confidence in, in, in trusting God to, to care for us. <coughs> Number six, the final one, God is glorified when we act wisely and trust him. When we act wisely. And so we want to act in a way that, again, to take self out of it. Because sometimes uh, we can respond in a way that um, is a kind of carnal or human of our response this is this is what i like you've heard me say this before and i know i use this a lot because even when we respond to things most of the time when somebody is talking to us we speak we speak we think about what we said then we have to pray we speak think pray and i say i'm going to encourage you to pray first like nehemiah think and then speak and guess what sometimes you don't have to say anything at all sometimes God says, Shh, be quiet. Don't even say anything. You don't say. Anything. And you know, I've learned this that sometimes I don't dignify uh, certain conversations because they're not even worth my my discussion. Sometimes, you know, you when you here's what I here's a, what I learned. It says it's difficult to have an intelli <laughs> intelligent discussion with with uh, someone else who's unarmed <laughs> with intelligence. Amen. So you know, there's some there's some. Um, conversations or discussions that have gotten heated to the point like why am I really wasting my time this is not I'm not even going to give this any credit to have discussions so again I want to make sure uh, that I don't even give that any credit to do so all right all right you all so I know that was a lot to cover um, there's a lot in this lesson I want to encourage you to read and to look at YouTube look at the story of Nehemiah it's great um, I know that um, after immediate following this um, time frame will be a message um, from Pastor Brian D. Hunter as our pastor. He's been really doing good in Bible class. So let me also say this. Do, do you all know that if you, for whatever reason, miss like Bible class on Wednesday or his message on um, Sundays, that you can go back and look at them and just go onto the Facebook page and you can pull up the different messages. And so... Um, you can you can look at those things and 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 um, at any time. So sometimes if you can't sleep uh, in the evening or wake up early, you can get those messages at any time. So that's a what's a wonderful blessing to be able to do so. All right, all right, you all. So thank you all so very much for tuning in. Have a wonderful wonderful Sunday. Remember again, let's try to encourage. And let's try to get uh, Brother Donald's book. Uh, and I'm going to talk, Brother Donald. Uh, give me a call. Let's talk about getting that book into the bookstore. 
and um, I would love to you know help get that book out there things are starting to open up a little bit so that I'm starting to do some um, events and and then things are starting to open up uh, to allow vendors to be coming different places so I'm, I'm doing that um, yes and Sunday school also you can take a look at the Sunday schools uh, things as well so thank you all sometimes I get really excited and have a lot to say um, just because the lessons are so good it's, it's to really time this so I think I got a lot covered today but uh, remember the four R's rebuilding restoring repentance and returning to God that kind of really is the whole synopsis of, of Nehemiah and uh, let's learn a lesson from him so um, what I did want to say to you is with Nehemiah um, he was a man who understood the importance of the call he was a man of prayer he was patient and hopeful he was a prepared planner he was a great leader who inspired workers. No obstacles stopped his work. He was a man of integrity. He desired restored hearts and relationships. He led people to make new commitment to God and he was wholly focused on God. Amen, amen. So thank you all so very much. Have a wonderful, wonderful Sunday. Um, it looks like we've got about a minute left. I don't think I have time to play any songs, but I'll just say to you, how grateful I am to have you come on um, on Sunday morning. So thank you, thank you, and thank you again. Um, please be in prayer for those families that are still dealing with a, se a season of grief and loss. Um, and there's always an opportunity. So please, I want to encourage you to continue your, your encouragement to encourage three people this week. To really encourage and make it intentional. Make it intentional that... I'm going to call and make it intentional to encourage three people this week. Amen. Um, thank you so very much, you all. Thank you, thank you, and thank you again. You all are always so, so kind. And this is, you know, it's a blessing. I was telling a pastor friend of mine, my good friend, Pastor Dwayne Fisher, who also I would like to say, if you look on YouTube, it's called Seven Days to Live. Look on YouTube. It's a great discussion that he is having with uh pastors and other folks but i looked at one this morning um as i was preparing but uh pastor Dwayne fisher of the galilee church in san francisco has a youtube a link that's called seven days to live so google it and it, it's just really really interesting you'll find it very very interesting so thank you um thank you all so very much um so listen have a great sunday uh make it happen and make a difference in somebody's life. Make a difference in somebody's life. Intentionally make a difference. And I um, just want to say thank you again for uh, your continued commitment. Remember, immediately following will be Pastor Brian D. Hunter. He is our pastor teacher from the Berkeley Mount Zion Church located at 1408th Street in the city of Berkeley. And I'm going to bid you a good Sunday morning. God bless you. All right, be blessed. Mm -hmm.